Please rise. Grace and mercy and peace be yours from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. The text for our sermon today is taken from our gospel lesson, Luke chapter 15. We'll read just the very last verse where Jesus says, In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner who repents. So far, our text, you may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. How many people in this world know that you are here right now? How many people in this world are aware that out of everything you could be doing, you are in church? To hear the word of God and to receive his blessed sacrament so that you can be forgiven of all your sins and made an heir of eternal life in heaven. If you're like me, it's not a whole lot of people that know that. Not a whole lot of the 7.2 billion people in this world know or even care that you are in church right now. Now I say that not to make you feel guilty. Not to make you feel like you should always post on Facebook and Instagram every time you're in church. And if you don't, I have to wonder if you're really serious about being a Christian or if you're trying to hide your faith. No, that's not my purpose at all. Instead, I bring that out to show how few people know or even care that you're here at church right now. To show how small of a deal this is in the eyes of the world. In the eyes of the world, this, you being in church to receive forgiveness, this is completely irrelevant. It's why nobody's blogging about you right now or interviewing you for the Lake Local News. In the eyes of the world, this is just not a big deal. And so it may catch us a little by surprise when we hear the way that heaven is reacting right now. It may catch us a little by surprise to hear that this, you being in church to receive forgiveness from your Savior, this in heaven, this is a big deal. Now what Jesus was doing at the beginning of our text was a big deal. It was a big deal to the Pharisees and teachers of the law. It was a big deal to Jesus. For what was Jesus doing at the very beginning of our text? He was sitting with the tax collectors and the sinners, welcoming them and eating with them. He was associating with some of the lowest people in society. And while the Pharisees and teachers of the law thought that was a big deal because they couldn't believe that a respected rabbi would associate with such a crowd, Jesus thought it was a big deal for a completely other reason. It's why he tells these two parables in our text. For these, he tells these two parables to explain why him sitting with the tax collectors and sinners was such a big deal. For look at these two parables. They're very similar, right? In the first parable, a shepherd loses a sheep. And so the shepherd leaves the 99 behind and goes out and searches for his lost sheep. And when he finds it, he's filled with joy as he places that sheep on his shoulders and carries him back into his flock. In fact, he is so filled with joy over finding his lost sheep that he throws a great party so that everyone can celebrate the fact that he has found his lost sheep. And the second parable is similar, right? A woman loses a coin. And so she lights a lamp and sweeps her floor all in an effort to find this coin. And when she finds it, she too is filled with great joy. In fact, she is filled with so much joy that she also throws a big party to celebrate the fact she has found her lost coin. And Jesus doesn't let us misinterpret these two parables. He doesn't let us put our own spin on these parables and make them all about what we are doing the way we so often try to do with Scripture. No, 
Jesus gives us the explanation to these parables. For after the first parable, he says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. And then at the end of the second parable, he says, in the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And when we think about that, Think about how there is great rejoicing in heaven every time a sinner repents. Isn't it amazing to think about what's going on in heaven right now? Isn't it amazing to think about how all of heaven is rejoicing and enjoying a great big party right now? And isn't it amazing to think about that it's all in your honor? That it's all over the fact that you, out of everything you could be doing, are here in church right now to receive the forgiveness of sins which Christ your Savior has won for you. For while very few people in this world know what you are doing right now or would even care about what you are doing right now, that's not the case in heaven. Your God knows what you are doing and he cares deeply about what you are doing. In fact, he is rejoicing about what you are doing. He is rejoicing that right now you are repenting of your sins and receiving the forgiveness which Christ, your dear Savior, won for you by his death and resurrection. In fact, that fills up his heart with so much joy that just like the shepherd, just like the woman, he is throwing a great party in heaven right now all over the fact that you are repenting. That's how he's excited he is that you are repenting of your sins. For when we focus on these two familiar parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin, don't just think about conversion. We often only think about conversion, often only think about the time when somebody doesn't know Jesus but comes to faith in Jesus. We think that is when Jesus is searching for people, finding people, and bringing them back into their fold. And that's true. Jesus does search for people and find them and bring them into his fold when he converts them. That's very true. But that's not the only time Jesus does that. Don't just limit these two parables to conversion. Notice that Jesus doesn't say there's great joy in heaven every time a sinner is converted. But he says there's great joy in heaven every time one sinner repents. And while repentance is a big part of conversion, repentance doesn't just include conversion, but repentance, it includes what all of you are doing right now. For what is repentance? I think the Augsburg Confession, one of the Lutheran confessions states it well. It says this, it says repentance consists of two parts. One is contrition, or the terrors that strike the conscience when sin is recognized. The other is faith, which is brought to life by the gospel or absolution. This faith believes that sins are forgiven on account of Christ, consoles the conscience, and liberates it from terrors. And when you recognize what true repentance is, terror over sin, and faith that trusts that Jesus has forgiven all your sins. When you recognize what true repentance is, do you see why what you are doing right now is included in these parables? Do you see why there is great rejoicing in heaven over the fact that you are here at church right now? For what is happening right now or any time you gather here at church? You are repenting of your sins. You're hearing the law, which strikes your conscience with terror as you recognize, I have disobeyed my God and I deserve his eternal wrath and punishment. But at the same time, you're hearing the gospel, which fills your conscience with great joy. Since the gospel creates faith inside of your heart, faith 
which clings to the fact that Jesus has forgiven each and every one of your sins. That's what's happening right now. And every time you are gathered here at church, you are being driven to repentance through both the law and the gospel. For repentance is not something that you can do on your own. You cannot dig down deep inside yourself and find the strength all by yourself to repent of your sins. But just like the sheep couldn't be found on his own, just like the coin couldn't be found on its own, but needed the shepherd and the woman to search for it respectively, so also you cannot be found on your own. You cannot repent on your own. But you need to be found. You need to be driven to repentance by hearing the law of the gospel. For only the law can create that terror inside of your conscience that your sins deserve to be punished by God. And only the gospel can bring that peace to your conscience as you recognize that you have received the forgiveness which Jesus won for you. Yes, only Jesus speaking the law and gospel to you can drive you to true repentance of your sins. And once that happens, once you are driven to repentance through both the law and the gospel, as is happening right now, once that happens, well, that's when there is the great rejoicing in heaven. That's when it's a big deal in heaven. For it's a big deal in heaven every single time you repent. Your Savior never gets tired of forgiving you. He never gets tired of washing you in your blood. But every single time you repent, whether it was the first time when you were converted and brought to faith, or the millionth time after you sin, every single time you repent, it is a big deal in heaven. And isn't that amazing to think about? For think about it in this way. It was a big deal the first time your child took steps. The first time your child walked, right? It was a big deal. You probably took pictures, took a video, called up grandpa and grandma and say, Hey, my child is finally walking. It was a big deal. But if your child is now 30, it's not that big of a deal when you see him walking. You've seen him walk for 30 years. He's taken millions, if not billions of steps. You've seen it all so often that it's no longer a big deal. That's not the way your God acts. It is a big deal to him every single time you repent. Even if you have been repenting of your sins for 30, 60, 90 years, it is still a big deal every time it happens. Nothing pleases him more than you repenting of your sins so that he can give to you free of charge the forgiveness which he won for you. Nothing pleases him more. It's why he throws that great big party in heaven every time you repent. It's why, it's why he'll throw that great big party in heaven for all eternity. It's all in your honor and in the honor of every other sinner who repents. And that's why what Jesus was doing at the beginning of our text, sitting with the tax collectors and sinners, that's why it was such a big deal. For Jesus was driving these people to repentance so that he could forgive all of their sins. In fact, that's why he was associating with them. It was to forgive all their sins. And do you know what? That's why Jesus is associating with you right now. It is to forgive your sins. It is to drive you to repentance. That's why this, what you are doing right now, is such a big deal in heaven. For you are dr being driven to repentance and receiving the forgiveness of all of your sins. And there is nothing in all the world that's a bigger deal than that. Amen. Please rise. Now may this peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> we continue by singing the created me as is found in the bulletin.